Act. The Honourable Member for Barry Innisville. Mr. Speaker, there can be little doubt that there was political interference from the Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Office Minister's office because of the handwritten notes by Darren Campbell, a superintendent panel in Nova, uh, or superintendent in the RCMP in Nova Scotia. In his notes, he wrote. The Commissioner said she had promised the Minister of Public Safety and the Prime Minister's office that the RCMP would release this information, release information in an active investigation that could have jeopardized the investigation. Who in the Prime Minister's office, who in the Public Safety Minister's office authorized Commissioner Lucky to speak to the RCMP? The Honourable Minister for Emergency Preparedness. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, first of all, the answer is no one. And secondly, perhaps, perhaps the, the, the member opposite isn't aware that the Commissioner of the RCMP is the Commissioner of the RCMP and doesn't require any authorization from anyone else to speak to her own organization. But, Mr. Speaker, what is also clear, and the, commis the Commissioner has made very clear to the Mass Casualty Commission, is that no pressure, no direction, no orders were given by, by any member of this government to her in doing her job of running her organization. The Honourable Member for Barry Innisville. This is not funny, Mr. Speaker, because in his notes, in particular, the Nova Scotia R RCMP superintendent said that Lucky had accused them of disobeying her instructions to include specific information on the firearms used by the perpetrator. In his notes, Campbell also wrote that he told the RCMP Strategic Communications not to release information right. about the perpetrator's firearms out of concern that it would jeopardize the investigation. The RCMP Commissioner said that she had received instructions from the Prime Minister's office and Mr. Blair's Public Safety Office, Mr. Blair's Public Safety Office, to interfere. We brought it up. It's nice, but when it gets brought up again, I understand the drama is good for TV, but it's not good for this chamber. The Honourable Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's very apparent that the, the, the Leader of the, opposite, the House and the Opposition is more interested in drama than in truth. M Mr. Speaker, th there is a fact here. The Commissioner has confirmed that no direction and no pressure was given by me or by any member of this government to direct her in any way. Mr. Speaker, this is a line of which I am most familiar. And no direction of an operational matter was given to the Commissioner of the RCMP by myself or any member of this government, and she's confirmed the truth of that. Member for Barry Innisfil. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, but, but this is not drama. This is about a police commissioner actively... The Honourable Member for Barry Innisville. The question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I do apologize, but this is not drama. This is about a direction to a police commissioner of the RCMP to actively be involved in a case, an ongoing investigation in Nova Scotia, from the Prime Minister's office to the Public Safety of Minister's office. That's the, act that's the accusation that has been made in this case, Mr. Speaker. So it is a serious matter that police are, investigate are, are actively investigating something, and they're being told by the Prime Minister's office and the Public Safety Minister's office that the Commissioners to interfere. Who told them? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I've said many times already today, and as I'll say again, no one told the RCMP Commissioner to, to, and gave her any direction or exerted any pressure. Mr. Speaker, the, the conversations that the Commissioner has with her subordinates in her organization is entirely independent of government, and the Commissioner is doing her job, but she has already confirmed for the Mass Casualty Commission a, a public inquiry intended to get to the facts of this matter that no such direction was given by any member of this government. The Honourable Member for Hamilton East Stony 